Good morning, everyone. It is good to see all of you here today in person. Welcome to First Presbyterian Church on this Lord's Day. It is World Communion Sunday, so we are joining in communion with uh, Christians all over the world today. So that is why we have this beautiful spread here on our communion table. I want to welcome those of you who are uh, tuning in via sundial. Sorry about that. I forgot my mask was on. Uh, tuning in uh, via sundial. And I just want to let you know that at the 830 service, the sundial people, a lot of you forgot to mute yourselves. And so everybody could hear what everybody else was doing. So if there's a way to um, mute yourself on sundial when you're calling in, please do that. Uh, John and KG, I'm not sure if there's a way we can help that here on our end. I want to also welcome those of you who are tuning in via Facebook Live and YouTube. Thank you for joining us this morning. We do have confirmation this morning as well, so we welcome a bunch of visitors who are here today um, to join in the celebration. Our bulletin insert today is absolutely filled with opportunities and events to grow your faith and to live out that faith. So we have updates on our Thanksgiving dinner and on our Christmas hospitality. We also have an update in there about our harvest celebration that we're having on October 17th. Uh, God is so good. We have so appreciated the ministry of uh, Reverend Guy Dunham in leading our caring ministry during this interim period. I do want to announce to you, though, this morning that we have hired a new director for caring ministry and outreach, uh, community outreach, and that is Marcia Mayfield. Uh, I believe we have a picture, so if you're on Facebook Live or YouTube, you're probably seeing her picture right now. We are so thrilled to have Marcia join our staff. She's going to begin on October 20th. And I will introduce her to the congregation on Sunday, October 25th. We're so excited to have her on board. And then on Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, October 7th, we actually have uh, the Stephen Ministry is sponsoring a presentation by Roberta Geidner from Wellspan, who's going to be talking about advanced directives. So if you're interested in that topic, you can certainly tune in via Facebook Live or YouTube. Um, you can also come in person to hear her presentation. Finally, just a few notes about today's service. Each of you uh, need a little individual communion cup, so if you haven't gotten one of them, they're on, uh, they're on the piano if you'd like one. Uh, if you're at home, please grab some bread and some juice so that you can join with us during communion. Our soloist, Evelyn, had to cancel today because her baby is sick. So we want to wish her well and, and, and pray that her um, and pray for healing. If you have children in worship today, you can grab an activity bag. I'm not seeing them. Oh, there they are. They're um, <laughs> right next to the fruit of the spirit tree. So if you have children, you can certainly grab an activity bag for today for the worship service. We do have names of all our kids on there. If you're a visitor, there are some without names. So if you'd like one, you can come up and get one. They have little earbuds in them. So we have a godly play story on our homepage. If you'd like to turn that on, parents, on your phone, and you can stick the earbuds in and your kids can listen to a godly play story this morning um, during the sermon if you would like. And um, our children's blessing time today will be right before communion. And as you are leaving today, since we have a little bit of a larger crowd today, just please, if you can stay, so not everybody go to the doors at one time, just stagger your exit. That would be wonderful. I believe those, that's all the announcements for today. Let us worship God together. Let us join together in our litany for World Communion Sunday. For all people, to all nations, grant unity, peace, and concord, and to all people give dignity, food, and shelter. Yes. Grant us abundant harvests and strength and skill to conserve the resources of the earth and wisdom to use them well. Yes. Enlighten us with your spirit, all who teach and all who learn. Yes. 
Come to the help of all who are in danger, necessity, and trouble. Protect all who travel by land, air, or water, and show your compassion on all prisoners and captives. Strengthen and preserve all those who are vulnerable and sick, all young children. Comfort the aged, the bereaved, and the lonely. Defend and provide for the widowed and the orphan, the refugees and the homeless, the unemployed and all who are desolate and oppressed. As the Creator and the Savior are one, make us one in word and sacrament. Secure our unity in Christ as we worship. May we all be one. As we discriminate, judge, and hurt one another, call us back now to the table of repentance that we might find in your broken body our reason for serving with the energy, intelligence, imagination, and love. In your precious Son, Jesus, we pray. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set us free from the law of sin and death. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. To this peace we were called as members of a single body. The peace of Christ be with you. Peace.
Just as you were called to one hope of your one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all. You are a chosen race. You are a royal priesthood, a people belonging to God in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's who you are. Obeying the word of our Lord Jesus in confidence, in his promises, we baptize those whom God has called. In baptism, God claims us and seals us to show that we belong to God. God frees us from sin and death, uniting us with Jesus Christ to, in his death and resurrection by the water and the Holy Spirit. We, have, we are made members of the church, the body of Christ, and joined to Christ, the ministry of love, peace, and justice. One of our, I'll introduce uh, our con confirmants. Number one, number one. On behalf of the session, I pre present Prince Turineo to receive the sacrament of baptism. Prince, do you desire to be baptized? Do you, as members of the Congregation of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture Prince by word and deed, with love and prayer, encouraging him to know and follow Christ and to be faithful members of his church. We do. To our confirmands, we are very proud of you as a church. Your session now presents Patrick Bahati, Matthew Burr, Nora Gott, Natalie Nardantonio, Ewan Reedy, Ben Rohrbaugh, he's not here today, Prince Turineo, and Luke Watkins. We present you today to make your public profession of faith, reaffirming your baptismal covenant into which you were baptized. We rejoice that you now desire to declare your faith and to share with us in our common ministry. Through baptism, we enter the covenant God has established. In that covenant, God gives us new life. We are guarded by evil and nurtured by the love of God and God's people. In embracing that covenant, we choose whom we will serve by turning from evil and turning to Jesus Christ. So we're going to do renunciation. So for, for Patrick being baptized today, you all also are going to do the renunciation, along with all of us, to remember our baptisms, okay, where we renounce evil in our lives. Let's do this together. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Just say, I do. Will you be Christ's faithful disciple? Obeying his word and showing his love, I just say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, 
creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of God the Father. He will just come to judge the quick and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you be a faithful member of this congregation to the confirmants, share in its ministry through your prayers and gifts, your study and service, so fulfilling your calling to be a disciple of Christ, you say, I will with God's help. Will you devote yourself to the church's teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers, you say, I will with God's help. Let us, let us pray. God, we thank you for this powerful reality of the baptismal water. Whether we remember our baptism because we were babies, or whether we have a moment like Prince will have, where he'll always remember this moment, we are remembered. And Lord, in your spirit, we all remember our baptisms now, thanking you that in baptism, we truly renounce evil in our lives, in the ways of the world. The values of the world we renounce, and we take on the values of Jesus Christ as Christ leads us to it. We thank you, God, that in this baptism, even though I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit of water on, on Prince right now, we remember that we are baptized fully as if we die in a watery grave and are raised to new. We thank you, God, for this sacrament, this pointer, this window to eternity, that we are all baptized into the same one baptism of Jesus Christ. Amen. Prince, we love you, Prince. We are so glad you're part of our church. You know, you have been a blessing in all of our lives, as your whole family has. And we are so honored to baptize you. Prince, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh Lord, uphold Prince by your Holy Spirit. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in the presence, both now and forever. Amen. Prince, child of the covenant, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit in baptism and marked with this water as Christ's forever. Amen. Here's a little cow. Oh Lord, we pray you'd uphold. Just extend your hand up towards them. Lord, Uphold these new members by your Holy Spirit. Help them daily to increase in the spirit of wisdom and understanding, in the spirit of counsel and might, in the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, in the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. Through baptism, we welcome you. Remembering your baptism, these who have been received into the one holy Catholic apostolic church. That means the universal church. It goes beyond these walls. Confirm, as you have affirmed the covenant into which you were baptized. As members of the household of God, God has called you to serve Christ in the world. You have a purpose. You have a mission. Let us welcome them into ministry with joy and thanksgiving. We welcome you to share with us in the ministry of Christ. We are, one, we are all one in him. Pastor Allison and I pray for you. We will pray for you every day. The staff prays for you. This church will pray for you, that you listen to the call, that you go into the world and live at, through the power of the Spirit, not your own power, in this grand story of redemption that God is writing in and through the world and in you, okay? Let us pray. God, we praise you for these young people who have, who have worked for the nine months, even six months of it during COVID to learn the faith and to write these statements and to take, take on this call to be full participating members in the body of Christ, uh, the, the local church. We thank you for the teachers that we've had that have been so faithful to love and to care for them. 
We thank you for the companions that have walked beside them these nine months, who have even during COVID met some of them out at, at the park for a socially distanced uh, spiritual walk and talk. God, we thank you for the calls and the texts of encouragement that have happened in this time. God, we know this is just the beginning. And we thank you for all these young people who have taken on this call to live into the, the world of gospel and to leave the world of evil. God, we lift up them in their journey. We know that your word says that you've given them everything they need for life and godliness in the world. We pray that they, whenever they feel alone, they will call on us and they will call on you. God, we pray that whenever they feel discouraged, that they will go to your word, that whenever they feel sad, that they will grieve with their brothers and sisters in you, but grieve with hope. Bless their lives, Lord. Bless their journeys. Thank you, God, that we get to be a, 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 a special part of that journey. In Jesus' name, amen. I would like for us to just all just clap as loud as we can to thank God for them. Now, as we come to the word of the Lord, let us uh, join together for a prayer for illumination. O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today is World Communion Sunday, which means churches from all over our country, all over the world, from every country, from every nation, believers in Jesus Christ are breaking bread and pouring wine today as we join in the sacrament, as we will join in the sacrament this morning in the spiritual realm where there is no pandemic where there are no nations or oceans to separate us, no tribalism, no disorderly politics, no borders can possibly separate us. Today is a communion of and with the saints, when even death cannot separate us from the church universal in Christ. Today is also Confirmation Sunday. Wow, that's a great group of students, isn't it? Amen? Also a great youth pastor and leader, great teachers, great companions, great family being here. Praise the Lord for all of that. Today, all of us also remember our baptism, as I said, so that we can live and live in fidelity to Christ alone and to live into the kingdom that he's bringing on earth as it is in heaven. Now let us hear first the Old Testament reading from Micah, and then the lectionary reading, which is a, a way of reading scripture that sort of binds the church worldwide in unity. Micah 6, 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with the thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O, mo o mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. 
This is the word of the Lord. And now Matthew 21, 33 through 40. Jesus said, listen to another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a watchtower. Then he rented the vineyard to some farmers and moved to another place. When the harvest time approached, he sent his servants to the tenants to collect his fruit. The tenants seized the servants. They beat one, killed, killed another, and stoned a third. Then he sent over the servants to him, more than the first, and the tenants treated them the, the same way. Last of all, he sent his son to them. They will respect my son, he said. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to each other, This is the heir. Come, let's kill him and take his inheritance. So they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. Therefore, when the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to the tenants? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to Christ. All the children and the students, I want to encourage you. Sometimes the readings might not make sense when you read them, but that's what the sermon is for. So make sure that when the pastor is reading the, the, the text that you try to follow along. That's a great exercise of reading scripture. And plus it helps you to understand what the pastor's saying. This last July, I wanted to go on a journey to trace the steps of some of my heroes. John McLean, the Reverend John McLean, served First Presbyterian Church of Missoula, Montana from 1913 to 1926. A wonderful man, a wonderful pastor, a wonderful fly fisherman. His son Norman, who became a professor of literature at uh, University of Chicago, wrote a book in the 1970s, or it was published in the 1970s, called A River Runs Through It, and that is my favorite American novel. It's a gorgeous uh, book and a gorgeous movie about faith and family and fly fishing. So I went to Montana by way of Bozeman. I went to Missoula, and I wanted to, to fish where the boys had fished, where the McLean boys had fished. So I found this place called the North Fork of the Blackfoot River out of Missoula. And when I was buying my tackle, the guy that was selling me the tackle said, do you have bear spray? And I said, yes. He said, because there are a lot of grizzlies up there. So I was like, okay. I'm gonna go ahead and go, I'm gonna do it. So I drove up there, I had my bear spray on my side, and, and I began fishing the pristine waters of the north, uh, the north fork of the Blackfoot. I was so focused on those trout, so focused on that beauty, that at about 4 o'clock I realized that um, I'd run out of water and I was getting very tired. I didn't, had no idea it was 4 o'clock. And I called my hotel before. I said, listen, if I don't return by dark or call you to say I'm returning, you need to call the police. And I told them where I would be. As an as a extra measure, I called my parents back in Arkansas. I said, if you don't hear from me by dark or 10 o'clock at night, you need to call the police. This is where I will be because I had no cell service and, of course, you know, the bears, right? So I, I was fishing up that river. I got really tired, and I started to almost stumble in the river. And I realized, I'm getting tired. I need to get back, and it's going to get start getting dark. And so I start trekking back down the river, and I didn't realize how far I had fished up there. And I knew that walking in the river back, I needed to stay near the river, but walking in it would be dangerous because I knew I would fall. I was just too tired. I had double bagged some uh, trail mix and put it in my backpack. And, you know, double bagged it because I didn't want the grizzlies to come after my trail mix. So while I'm walking, I'm realizing I'd get on a path, and then the path would end. And I found myself, with it get, getting darker and darker, traipsing through thickets of, of, of thick, thick bush and trying to get over big fallen trees. And I started to get anxious. I really started 
to feel like I might be in some danger. You know, I was trying to retrace the footsteps of my heroes. And I think all of us, in our own ways, we want to go on a hero's journey. We want to wield power. We want to wield power in a way that will be heroic. We want to find an adventure, a hero's journey that will help us make meaning in our lives. Every young boy or girl, if you've grown up in this culture, then you know about Star Wars, right? Living into that myth of Star Wars. Since now that they have Disney+, Plus, you can see every single movie, and even the ones, the new shows that they've written. The, the, I remember when I was about five or six, I got my first TIE Fighter, and I got my first lightsaber. It was so cool. I would, I would be up in my room, and I would be in my imagination slaying all those stormtroopers. By the way, episodes five, six, and seven are the best. I'm sorry. No contest. But I, I just dream of being like Luke, right? Training to be a Jedi. Training to be this amazing person on this, and this hero. And, and that's, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be a Jedi. You will listen to this sermon. Okay. That didn't, that didn't, that didn't hit like the first service. <laughs> you will listen to this sermon. Okay. Maybe I don't have Jedi powers. But all of us heroes, all of us want heroes, and all of us in our own ways want to be heroes. To do this, we want to go on a hero's journey. My daughter Ellie, who's here, uh, ever since she was small, she dreamed of the adventures of travel. Uh, of, she dreamed of a hero's journey. First it was to Europe, and she providentially ended up in England with her school, thanks to some wonderful friends. Of course, she had a guide there in London. Then it was India. The movie Eat, Pray, Love sealed the deal for her. And somehow, providentially, through our new church in York, she ends up in India with guides to keep her safe from the chaos of the traffic in Mumbai on the way to Carmel School. And as she looks forward to graduating from college, she's dreaming of a VW van and taking a, 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 a trek across the country. I keep thinking, man, VW vans are too old. You need to get a newer van. But she wants to trek across the country in a heroic adventure, and then on to a career, another heroic adventure. All of us want heroes, and all of us in our own ways, we want to be heroes. But the thing about Ellie, and I asked her permission to display this vulnerability of hers, with all her dreams for travel and adventure, she has almost no sense of physical direction. I mean, you can put a blindfold on her, turn her around, take it off and say, go north, and she'd go south. If you said go east, she'd go west. Sorry, Ellie. <laughs> she says she's getting better, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, she got it honestly because both her, her grandfather and her, both her grandfathers are not good at direction. So, my, uh, all three of these beloved family members love to travel, but all three are in desperate need of a compass. And my father was in, uh, realistic enough to actually uh, mount a compass on his car dash. And I know several of us have given compasses to Ellie with a little twinkle in our eyes. All of us want heroes, and all of us in our own ways want to be heroes. All of us want to take a hero's journey. We want to wield power. We want to wield power in a way that will be heroic. But we cannot find our way because we have no real sense of direction. Did you know that the Arctic Tern, it's a small little white bird, travels every year from the North Pole to Antarctica? Over 17,000 miles each way and then comes back? Unbelievable sense of direction. They've done it to where they've taken the turns from, from the, the North Pole and they've taken them to like New York and let them go. Guess what happens? they find their way to Antarctica. No one knows how. Salmon have this amazing 
ability, the, the river where they're born, not just the river, but the spot where they're born, they leave that, that spot and they go down out into the ocean. And for several years, they literally swim, up. some of them swim the oceans of the earth. And then several years, they come back up that same river. And they don't just go up the same river. They find the exact spot within four feet of where they were born. They have this amazing sense of direction. But we humans, we don't have that kind of compass within us. Or perhaps we lost it somewhere along the way. Or it got cracked along the way. And we have to learn how to take our heroic journey through the journey of others. And most importantly, through the journey of another, our guide. We have to find a compass we somehow lost along the way. We have to learn how to live heroically by the journey of another, because if we don't find our compass in life, if we don't find our path, we do tremendous damage to ourselves and others. Richard Rohr, Father Richard Rohr, talks about young men specifically. He learned this, uh, he learned a lot of this because he was a chaplain in prison for 13 years. And this is what he wrote, as men, if we do not learn powerlessness and vulnerability, then we will assuredly abuse power. He then writes, when a positive masculine energy is not modeled from a father to a son or from an older man to a younger man, it provides a vacuum into which demons pour. And I'm sure there's analogies with young ladies too. Unlike that arctic tern or those salmon, we have to find a way, our way, by walking the path and journey of others, especially the journey of one another. That is what confirmation is about. If you're sleeping, that, I'm preaching to you. You confirm it. That's what confirmation is about. It's about the admission of your need. It's about admitting your vulnerability. The need to be taught and follow in the path of another. For now, this beautiful sanctuary, right, is acting as a symbol for you. The water, the bread, the wine, the beauty of these windows when the sun pours through them. These windows also beckon you outside into a hero's journey, into a deeper life. Now, our culture cannot heal you. Our culture cannot give that to you. Our culture can give you a lot of good things. Finish school, check. Get good grades, check. Go to college, check. Get married, check. Get a career, check. Raise a family, check. But then at some point, what's left? You check out. Joining the church is not just checking a box. Joining the church is about embarking on a great and heroic journey where we learn to wield power heroically. Joining the church is a pledge to walk the path that others have trod, and one other specifically, who told the parable we just read. Joining the church is not a box you check. It is the beginning of a deep, disturbing, and beautiful journey into the depth of beauty and tragedy, exodus, recovery, and redemption. For you right now, the world might look really black and white, polarized, right and wrong, but in time, these symbols of the church will ground you for a lifetime of meaning in your heroic journey. So that in every stage of life you find me. Whether you're 20 or whether you're 90, you find real me. This is something our broader culture can never deliver to you. But this is the way the gospel offers.
This is what the gospel, gospel offers. You know, the first name for the church, we didn't call it the church. The very first name for the church had to do with the journey. The very first name for the church was simply the way. This parable, there is a great tragedy in it. The landowner creates this beautiful wine vineyard. Can't you picture like Napa Valley without the fires? Those hills going up and down with beautiful vines lined up on them. This huge wine press where they bring all these beautiful grapes and out pours this grape juice into these big oak, big vats. It's a beautiful scene. This landowner is so good-hearted in the parable. He just keeps believing that sending his emissaries will put the vineyard workers right. But they keep abusing and killing everyone he sends. These emissaries in the parable stand for the prophets God sent. In the past, those who were killed for telling the truth. But then the vineyard owner says, I will send my son. They will respect him. They will respect my son. But because of their thirst for power and money, they kill him instead. This stands for God sending Jesus in the parable. And the vineyard workers stand for the religious leaders who use religion for power and control. They abuse Jesus with their power. They abuse him until he dies. They have not walked the path of the hero. They are stuck in the shallow, in the black and white, and they are simply tragic. This is the world you live in. Whether you are talking about career or family or politics, our world is conditioned by the tragic. This is the world Jesus walked into. And he assumed this world in and upon himself, not as he wishes it would be, but as it is. You see, in the past you were learning to walk in church through relationships, through these sacraments, through these beautiful windows that beckon you into the world. They all point to one thing. The hero we believe in dies a tragic death. And all of us will die a thousand deaths in a world that kills those who speak the truth. The real hero dies, so we must also die by letting go of the world's values. I don't mean physical deaths, but dying to the sinful world in order to live into the world of gospel. Now, Christians never seek martyrdom. It comes to them by them telling the truth too much. To be a hero in the journey, we must refuse to abuse power, and we must be willing to die for the truth of love. That is what happened in the baptism we just saw. That is what you're signing up for when you join the church. That is the common world communion theme. The bread is broken, the wine is poured out, and we are too. Poured out with he who was sent to assume our tragedy and redeem it. To be a real hero, we learn from the path cut by the only real hero. Christ willing to redeem the tragic by embracing it. There's a monumental paragraph on being a hero written by a man named Joseph Campbell many years ago. Just listen to this, it's really wonderful. We have not even to ask the adventure alone. We have, we have not even to risk the adventure alone, for the heroes of all time have gone before us. The labyrinth is thoroughly known. We have only to follow the thread of the hero path, and where we have thought to find an abomination, we shall find the divine. And where we have thought to slay another, we shall slay ourselves. And where we had thought to travel outward, we shall come to the center of our own existence. 
And where we had thought to be alone, we shall be with all the world. The real hero's path is to follow the invitation out through the stained glass windows into the world of the tragic. But like Jesus, who was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, he was killed. And that was the end of that, right? The hero was no more, right? Silence. Except that the God of all true heroes rolled the stone away on the third day. Jesus did not raise himself up, not at all, but it was the act of God intervening in the tragic, the dedication of the abuse of power, but the revelation of what true power is, the power of love, truth, and truth, love, where the true hero relies on the power of God instead of his own. Where in the face of the tra tragic abuse of power, the power is revealed. As a Christian, you don't got to go out in the world and say, I know all this stuff. You go out in the world with your breath taking with the fact that you know so little. You go out into the world as an open child of God. Going out into the world as those who know they can't walk without the strength of another. Jesus was tragically crucified. This shows us the true path of the hero's journey. At the table we eat from today, we share in the tragic and the hero's journey, which finds us not alone in the world, but we find ourselves instead with all the world at this table. Participating in the community of faith is the beginning of a deep, disturbing, beautiful journey into the depth of what beauty and tragedy and exodus and recovery and redemption mean for all of us. Learning to walk the true hero's path through death to resurrection. The symbols of the church may only now be for you like those polar black and white and right and wrong, in and out, but keep walking the paths because they will become for you a hero's journey. Your compass repaired by the Holy Spirit illuminating the scriptures, illuminating the community, illuminating the bread, the wine, and the water, illuminating all of creation even. And Jesus Christ as himself is your guide. But there will still be times when you truly feel lost like I did in the forest that day. So that... July afternoon this last summer, as I was trying to get my way through the forest back home, afraid that it would get dark, afraid of a bear or two, I kept scaring and they were so loud that I thought for sure it was a bear. And then I'd see it was a deer, and I'd go, oh, thank you. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm walking, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to stay near the river. I'm looking down in the river, wondering if I can get down there safely to walk through the river, and I think, no, that's not safe. And I look up, and I see the faces of two horses through the trees. And suddenly, these two horses run at me almost full speed, come right near me, and stop. They were on the path. Well, evidently, they could smell through my backpack, my my trail mix. Evidently, bears have been smelling it all day. The horse, the, the gelding especially, was in my face. And so I started scratching his ears and I started hitting his, uh, his neck real hard. I'd stick my head on his head and rub and I'd grab that fatty piece of flesh under his chin and just grab it. And he was playing with me. So I thought, well, he wants food. So I, I started walking out. He followed me and she followed me really close knocking up against my backpack. So finally I got some of my trail mix out and I fed them. I said, okay, get out of here. And they jumped for a second. They followed me again. So I walked a little longer. Suddenly I'm not alone. I'm on, on a path. So I get some more trail mix out and I pour a big pile on the trail. I say, now go away. I, I can get home now. 
And the gelding stepped right over it and kept following me. The mare ate just a little bit, and they kept following me and following me, and they took me all the way to the room. I stepped over the gate, and the gelding stuck his head up over the gate, like he was saying, you're good now. Goodbye. Those horses showed me the path home. They walked with my lonely soul all the way down that road. I don't know. For me, God showed up. Don't you think there's times when we're lost? We just need God to show up. Because our culture cannot possibly heal us. Our culture cannot possibly show us the way. We live in a world that is beautiful and good, but which we have abused and used. We live in the world where there is an inherent tragedy, just like that parable. But in the tragedy, hope breaks through. The compass gets repaired. The path is found. The horses show up. The bread is broken. The wine is given. And the water is poured out onto us. And the stained glass where the light pours in also calls us out into a hero's journey. And we find not just a great adventure and journey and a sense of meaning and direction for our lives, but we find the real in walking with us, recovering, redeeming, and repairing all things. And where we had thought to travel outward, we shall come to the center of our existence. And where we had thought to be alone, we shall be with all the world. In response to God's gifts, we bring our offerings. We do have baskets at the exits for those of you who may have envelopes with you today. We want to thank you so much for your support of our ministries at FCC. Let us pray. Gracious God, accept these humble gifts. May they honor and glorify you in all creation, and may they empower us for the work of witness and service for the sake of justice and for the sake of peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. children's blessing time. So if you have children at home, um, could you just please bring them to the screen so that I can have a few minutes with them. If there are children here, we'd just like you to stay seated and just you can uh, listen from, from your pews. But boys and girls, during the next few weeks, we're talking about why we do what we do in worship. And I would love for you to take a look at this table because we're talking about communion today. So if you can take a look at this beautiful table, Miss Katie, who sits right up here in the choir loft, she did this for us and it looks beautiful, doesn't it? There's all different kinds of bread. So I wanna to talk to you for a minute about different types of bread. So when you're making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you're probably using white bread or wheat bread, probably. But there's all different kinds here. There's French bread, there's multigrain bread, pumpernickel and rye, and my favorite, sourdough and honey wheat. There's all kinds of different breads. And you know, there's all kinds of different people, right? All kinds of different people who love Jesus. Now, our
church loves Jesus. Everybody here loves Jesus. But there are also people in India who love Jesus. And there are people in China who love Jesus. There are people in South America who love Jesus. There are people in Africa who love Jesus. Everywhere around the world, there are people who love Jesus. And today we're doing the same thing. We are having communion today. And what is communion? Bread and we drink the cup. And when we break the bread, see how I'm breaking it right here? It reminds us of Jesus' body that was broken on the cross. And when we pour out the juice, it symbolizes Jesus' blood that was shed on the cross. So communion really reminds us how much Jesus loves us. And how much Jesus, how Jesus died, not just for me and not just for you, but for all of us, for everybody around the world. And that's why we celebrate World Communion. Let's pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of communion. When we can remember Jesus and come around this table as one world family. Thank you for our brothers and sisters all over the world who are celebrating communion with us. Unite us in faith so we can all remember Jesus and give him praise. Amen. As I said to the children, this is the table of the Lord and it is for everyone. It's not a Presbyterian table, it is God's table and it's a table of grace. So come and take your place at the table. You are welcome. You are invited. You are called. Come, let us share this meal together. Let us pray. God, it's truly right in our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. Even when we were dust, when our story began in dust, you were there. Your word was there and you breathed life into a formless void and Upon your word, all creation sprang to life. But when in the wilderness we fell short, we became slaves to power and greed, you were there even then. Your word was there on the lips of prophets, calling us to acts of courage and witness and peace. Blessed are you, O Christ, for risking yourself to be among us, vulnerable and rejected, for teaching among us, teaching the radical love of God, teaching grace and hope and peace. You were there, your word was there, even to the point of death itself. But you rose again to new life, to resurrection, so that we might know something more than dust. Gracious God, pour out your spirit upon us. And upon these gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup that we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of your son, Jesus. Lord, we lift up to you our world and our country. Lord, we pray today for our president and for our first lady and for all those who have been diagnosed with COVID-19. We pray for their healing we pray for our members, our church members, who are in need of healing and for comfort. We pray for Ron Carr, Becky Davids, Mike Frankenberry, for Jeff and Betsy Lane, Ada Bene, Helen G, Vicki and Kara. Lord, may we be one with all who share this feast today, on this day of all days with all your children at every corner of your table, Hear us, God, as we pray to you the great prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. 
our Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took bread and after giving thanks for it, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood and shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. For whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's saving death until he comes again. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let us keep this feast. Do you want to take your wafer for those of you who are here? The bread of heaven and the cup of salvation. Let us partake. Let us pray. Gracious God, we want to just offer you our thanks for feeding us in this sacrament and for the ministry of churches around the world who gather with us around this table today. At this shared table, may we be united as children of promise, children of your word, sent boldly together into the world as servants of your peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are marching in the light. We are marching in the light of God. We are marching in the light. self that God has made, created in Christ Jesus to reconcile, to be an ambassador of reconciliation in the world. Be your best self. Don't live out of the world's values. Live out of the values that Christ gives you. Don't fear. Be courageous. Be the gospel you believe. May the love of our Father, the grace of the Son, and the power of fire and counsel of the Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Amen.